Make turn to 240, I'll accept you 75. 513 descending to 4000. 707, Hi, thanks for joining me once again and in this video I'm going to be talking through my workflow for editing and processing my aviation photographs. Now I always use Lightroom anyway regardless of whether I'm shooting aviation or landscape images but uh, for aviation photography I've started to use uh, Topaz Denoise AI I'm a fairly uh, relative newcomer to, uh, to Topaz. I know it's been around for a while, but I've only just recently started using it. And uh, also a sharpening technique in Photoshop, which I've recently started using as well. And for me, both of those have been a game changer. So what I'm gonna do is uh, show you my uh, workflow for editing a single image to start with, so that uh, I can explain my principles uh, of my workflow. And then a little bit later on, we'll be taking a look at some batch processing. So join me now in Lightroom and we'll take a look at a single image of a Phantom that I took at the Royal International Air Tattoo on one of the arrivals days in 2019. Okay, so when I edit my aviation photography images, I use three pieces of software. I always use Lightroom anyway for all of my photo editing. But in the case of aviation photography, I tend to use Topaz Denoise AI and Photoshop. Initially, let's just look at this single shot of a Phantom, which was taken at Riyadh, uh, one of the arrivals days in 2019. So in Lightroom, in the develop module, I'll crop the image first, just to give a bit more impact, a bit more creativity to the shot, and maybe a bit of a twist as well. As you can see, this was shot on my uh, Canon 7D Mark II at 1 2,000th of a second, f6.3, and the ISO was 500, and it was uh, taken with the Tamron 150 to 600 mm G2 at 600 mm. And zoomed right in, you can see that there is a little bit of grain and noise on the image due to the ISO and the low lighting conditions, and also a little bit of uh, sharpening is required as well. So further editing techniques I use are chromatic aber aberration removal and uh, lens correction. And then in the basic tab of Lightroom, I usually increase the exposure a little bit. And uh, by default, I always increase the texture and the dehaze by around about plus 20. I reduce the highlights to the maximum, so minus 100, and the shadows up to plus 50, as a general rule of thumb. And then by pressing the Alt button on a Mac keyboard, I slide the whites and the blacks sliders up and down to set the white and the black points, so as to not blow any highlights or block any darks. And then I get the eyedropper tool for the white balance, and click on any neutral area, either a white or a light gray, to set the white balance of the image. I tend to find sometimes that gray aircraft turn out a little bit on the green side, so I use the eyedropper tool just to try and get the white balance a little bit more correct. And then I sometimes pop into the tone curve and just add a medium contrast tone curve to see what that does to the image. In this case, it's added a bit too much darkness to the underside of the aircraft, so I'm going to leave the tone curve in linear. And then in Lightroom, I remove sharpening and noise reduction completely, because I'm going to be doing that separately using Topaz and Photoshop very shortly. So I'm happy with that image at the moment, so I'm going to edit it further in Photoshop. And once the image is opened in Photoshop, I want to look at this area here, which is a bit bush or a tree that the aircraft was flying past. So using the patch tool, I'm just going to go around that and provided content aware is selected at the top, I'll just move the patch over and clone that area out. Just do a little bit more just to make it look a little bit more natural. Yep, I'm happy with that. And there's a little spot there, so I'm going to remove that as well. 
Good. I'm happy with that. So the next job is to remove noise. So I use Topaz Denoise AI. And for me, this has been a complete game changer. I'm a relative newcomer to Topaz. And I find that the editing that I've done so far, which I tend to do on all of my aviation images, increases the grain and the noise a little bit because you're boosting the shadows. And Topaz completely removes that and I think it's a brilliant piece of software. So this is the first step in my external editing process if you like um, to remove noise. So as you can see here I've got the original selected on the left and clear selected on the right and you can see what effect Topaz can do to remove the noise. Now this is the split view. So let's try standard on the right hand side now and see what the difference is between clear and standard. I find that editing aviation pictures usually works best with standard or clear for noise removal. So if I go into the comparison view, you can compare four different settings, one of which you can remain at uh, the original setting. So I'm particularly interested in standard and clear. I find that those two settings work best for aviation pictures, especially where you've boosted the shadows for the underneath of the aircraft. So looking specifically at the top two portions of the screen here, standard on the left and clear on the right, what I'm doing is I'm looking to see what option has provided the best denoise and also retained the most sharpness. And I think looking at the back of the landing gear door there on the nose gear, possibly standard is a little bit better. It looks a little bit sharper. So I'm going to choose standard and press apply. And Topaz can apply that noise reduction onto that image. Now for me this takes a little while because my iMac is a few years old now so it's running a little bit on the slow side these days. But once the processing is finished Topaz will close and the image with noise reduction applied is now remaining in Photoshop. And as you can see, zooming in to 200%, it now looks pretty clean. Hardly any noise at all, no grain. It looks like a nice smooth image. So double click the hand, return it to full size or full screen. And now comes the sharpening process. Now I've discovered this fairly recently and again this is game changing for me. So this produces really quite spectacular results I think. So what I'm going to do is duplicate the layer uh, either through the menu or you can uh, press command J on the Mac keyboard. So you now got a second layer. And that top layer, I'm now going to go to Image Adjustments and Desaturate to turn it into a black and white layer. Just remove all the color. And then Filter, Other and High Pass. And we're going to apply a High Pass filter now. Now on a 20-ish megapixel camera like the 7D Mark II, I find that around between 3 to 5 pixels does the job just right. I tend to go for 3.5 pixels, which is what I've set here. And you can see it just increases the definition and the contrast on all of the lines in the image. I'm going to go to a blend mode now and select overlay. And the high pass filter now is overlaid over the image. And all of the edges and the lines have now been sharpened. And it gives the appearance that the whole photograph has been sharpened. And I think it does a really good job, as you can see. On, off, on. 
on, off, on, off, and back on. Now if you want slightly less sharpening, you can choose soft light as an option, a little bit more subtle, or you can go for hard light, which increases the effect of the sharpening. It's really personal choice and it depends on the photograph, I suppose. But most of mine, I find that overlay with 100% uh, opacity does the job just fine. And of course, regardless of which of those three options you use, you've always got the opacity function to reduce the effect as well. So you really can fine tune the sharpening to suit your image and to suit your preference. So I'm going to save the image now, Command S, or you can use the menu, and Command W to close the image. And then I'm going to return to Lightroom. and that leaves the new image, the new noise reduced image and the sharpened image next to the original RAW. Now I hope you can see on your screen that it really does produce quite a difference. So that's how I handle a single image. So editing and processing uh, a single image like that is all very well and good. But let's say we've just been to an air show and we've got several hundred or maybe even a couple of thousand images to get through and to whittle down to say maybe 80 favorites, something like that. How do we finalize those 80 images? If we did each in image individually, it would take ages, it would take forever. So using batch processing in Topaz and Photoshop, we can speed up the whole process and make it much more efficient. So let's take a look at three images. Let's pretend it's 80, but let's take a look at three images and I can show you my workflow uh, with regard to batch processing in Topaz and Photoshop. So we're going to set up an action. So if the action window isn't there, you can choose actions from the window menu and make sure the button mode is not selected. So now we're going to select new action. And we're going to give it a name. So I'm going to call it aviation sharpen and I'm going to pr provide a color for the button, which is blue. And it's going to be recording and just verify that by making sure the red dot is saying it's recording. So now we're going to repeat that process. So I'm going to duplicate the layer, desaturate it, and apply a filter to the other and high pass, three and a half pixels, press OK, and change the blend mode to overlay. I'm going to save. Now, when we save it this time, I'm going to save it as a copy. And I'm going to choose a file, a folder in my on my desktop, which I've already created, and save it as a TIFF in that folder. So my folder is called Aviation Sharpened Images. And then when the option comes up about save changes, we press Don't Save. Okay, so going back into the into the action menu, we can press Stop to stop it recording. And then I'm going to go into button mode. So there's a blue button there called Aviation Sharpen. So let's test what we've just done. So there's the button there. That's all we need to press to run the whole action. So let's open uh, an image and we'll just work on it just to prove that the system works. So we're just going to press a button, Aviation Sharpen, and that's it. It's all done. We haven't got to create any layers. It Photoshop does it automatically. And there we go. There's the sharpened image all automatically saved in the folder on my desktop. Now the next step in Photoshop is to create something called a droplet. So in the file menu, down to automate and create droplet. We're going to save the droplet onto the desktop and I've called it Aviation Sharpen. 
and the .app is automatically added by Photoshop. We're going to save it onto my desktop. Then running through the options, I'm going to check, choose the action as Aviation Sharpen, which is the action that we've already created in Photoshop. And then when the images are output from Photoshop, we're going to put them into a folder which I've already created called Sharpened Aviation Images and plus sharp is already added and we're going to press OK. And what this does, it creates a mini Photoshop program or application on the desktop that we can drag images over and it will automatically add our sharpened action to those images. So this time let's look at some batch processing. I've got three images here but let's imagine there are 80 images you've taken from an air show. So obviously reducing the workload and improving efficiency is the name of the game here. So these three images I have ed edited as before in Lightroom with a crop, adjusting exposure, highlight shadows, whites and blacks, texture, dehaze, and so on and so forth. So these three images we're going to select all and edit in Topaz Denoise AI. And we're going to edit copies with Lightroom adjustments, remain as a TIFF, Profoto RGB, 16-bit and 300. And Lightroom will now copy each of those images and turn them into a TIFF file ready for editing outside of Lightroom. Topaz opens up as before once again and this time the three images are listed at the bottom and you have the ability to individually select these but experience tells me that standard will do the job just fine so I'm going to stick with standard for all three but leave the settings for automatic so Topaz can decide the best course of action to apply the standard noise reduction. So just double checking that standard will do the job on this tornado. I'm only really comparing standard with clear at this point because I know with experience that standard or clear will do the best job just as before. So I'm going to choose standard because I think standard gives the best results. So I'm going to select all at the bottom to select all the images and make sure the first one says standard. The second one I'm going to choose standard and the third one I will choose standard as well once the previews have been made for the second image. And as you can see because I've left the setting on automatic Topaz has decided which standard noise reduction setting is best for that particular image. So noise, they're all different, 25, 21 and 20. And sharpness, they're all different as well, so on and so forth. So I'm going to apply those settings to each of those images by pressing apply. and maybe this is the time to go and make a cup of tea. So once Topaz has completed its work, the noise reduced images have been exported from Topaz back into Lightroom into the folder where they came from. So the TIFFs will then be back next to the RAWs in the same original folder in Lightroom. The next step is to right click on any one of those images and show in Finder. And that way we can get into the Finder to find the location of those images. And there we go, we've got the RAWs next to the exported TIFFs from Topaz. So what I'm going to do is minimize Lightroom, just so that I've got the desktop and this folder remaining open. And those three TIFFs, I want to grab hold of those and drag and drop them onto the droplet that we made earlier. So dragging and dropping them onto Aviation Sharpen, the droplet which is now on the desktop. 
And now behind the scenes Photoshop is doing its work to apply that sharpening action that we did earlier. And there we go, by opening Photoshop we can actually see what it's doing. And that's it. The sharpenings have been applied to those three images in no time at all. But if you remember, the droplet that we made, the action, doesn't actually save those images back into Lightroom. So now we need to get the images back into Lightroom, into the catalogue. So what we need to do now is to go and find those images that have been sharpened. Now we told Photoshop to put them into the folder called Sharpened Aviation Images on the desktop. And in fact, there they are. The same folders, but they've just got copy added to the end of the file name. So we'll select all three and drag and drop back into the folder that we found earlier. However, if we go into Lightroom again, those images do not show up automatically. We need to right click on that folder and synchronize the folder with Lightroom. Lightroom will then find those three images, the new images, and add them to the library when you press synchronize. And there we go, there are the new three images which have been imported. So if we click on the folder again, we'll find there are three copies. We have the raw, the denoised image, and the final image which has just been run through the Photoshop droplet for sharpening. And then it's entirely up to you how you organize those images. Now I would suggest we don't keep the middle process. So we keep the raw if you want to. We can delete the image which has just had the noise reduction applied to it. And we keep the sharpened image because the sharpened image of course has had the noise reduction and the sharpening applied to it. There's no real need to keep the one in the middle. So zooming in here on this uh, illusion you can see the raw, the noise reduced image and the sharpened image quite clearly. So my personal preference for doing something like this is to use the folder for a mini folder structure. So what I'm going to do is select the raw images only and then right click on the folder, create folder inside and then call it raw and make sure include selected images is selected. And then choose the finalized image, right click again, create folder inside and call it picks and include selected options images as well so there we go inside the folder there which I've called demo 2 for this you've got picks for the final image and raw for the raws and the three images left over were just the working images so we can delete those I no longer want those I'm just going to remove the photos delete from disk and they will remove themselves from Lightroom catalog and also the hard drive. And there are the three finalized images. So by using Topaz for all three images in one go and the sharpening droplet or the action that we made in Photoshop, it's very straightforward. All right, so that's my workflow for editing my aviation photographs. I hope you found that useful. And uh, like I said at the start, I've only just started using Topaz and uh, the sharpening technique in Photoshop. And for me, it is a real game changer. Uh, it's really improved my aviation photography uh, images. So uh, I hope you found that useful. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you again soon.